Morning. Welcome back to the Splash Live. Dave Scott. Uh, really looking forward to a concert that I have never had the opportunity to see. The Eagles, they've uh, been one of the iconic rock bands during my life. Hotel California isn't always number one on those classic rock playbacks on holidays, but it's almost always in the top five right up there with, you know, Stairway to Heaven and Freebird. And, uh, and, and our local connection, obviously, to the Eagles couldn't be stronger. Um, and uh, just one of the greatest fans. I've never seen them. So now they're coming. Gary Grapp is joining us. Um, of course, our uh, best known and most prolific music writer here in Metro Detroit. Gary, good morning and uh, welcome to the Splash Live. Good morning, Dave. Nice to be here. So, you know, Gary, I, I don't know what to do. So, listen, you know, you and I remember the days when I, I would just get the tickets and show up backstage and, you know, be reporting on the event. It's not like that anymore. I'm buying tickets now with everybody else. Eagles go on sale this morning at 10 o'clock. I'm lost, okay? I, I have no idea what to do. Um, is, is, tell me that there is uh, some science to getting these tickets. Uh, you know, uh, there isn't that much of a science. It's get yourself in line in the queue, as they like to say in the digital world, and hope that you're one of the people who gets a face value ticket before they go to the secondary sellers. And, the, you know, the challenge in this being that Ticketmaster runs its own secondary seller you know, operations. So in some ways it's buying tickets from itself to then to then sell at an elevated price. So you know, I wish I wish so I could tell you the ticket, science. I was gonna say I wish I could tell, could tell you the ticket, it, it, No, go ahead. Ticketmaster yeah, has we, become we, the scalper. Is that what you're trying is that what you're trying to say? That that they're buying the tickets from themselves and then reselling them at a higher price to increase their profits even more? I'll let you be the one to say that at extrapolating it from what I just said, but I think you can extrapolate <laughs> that from what I just said. And that's why, you know, they, they are under uh, various degrees of investigation, you know, what happened with the Taylor Swift, even more so than the issues they had with the Bruce Springsteen a ticket sale last year was the Taylor Swift ticket sale, which listen, if you are, if you are impeding, um, House of Representatives and Senate members, daughters and granddaughters' ability to get Taylor Swift <laughs> tickets. You, you are you are calling the wrath of the U.S. government upon you, and uh, which which is which is largely what what's happened. And there there is a I think a proper investigation into those business practices being conducted right now. All right, so tickets go on sale this morning. We'll get to the concert in a second. Uh, thank you for going through the mechanics of all this with us. Um, is there a brand that we should be going? I'm not looking for your endorsement, just your expertise. Is there a brand that we should be going to? I mean, I, I bring it up. I get Vivid Seats. I get a variety of different brands. They all look very credible. Uh, is there one we should focus on? I would now. I wouldn't necessarily call out call out one in particular. The main thing is to take a good hard look when you're buying these tickets. Make sure this looks like a legitimate site that you're dealing with. If you are dealing with a secondary ticket seller, the one benefit, of course, to buying through Ticketmaster's secondary selling you know apparatus is you know that those tickets actually exist. You know you're buying from a a real incredible site, but you're you're paying a premium for that. Uh, one right, thing I so, do one one thing yeah. I do often tell people in the, in the ticket buying world is don't be afraid to if you don't get the tickets face value, you know right away. Don't be afraid to sit down a little and wait till maybe the week before the show and see what shakes loose. All right, well, let's talk about the concert itself. How big is this tour, and, and do you believe this really is the final tour of the Eagles? I believe the Eagles, when they say it's going to be the long goodbye, which is what they're calling the tour, I don't, I don't think they're going to do these, what do they have announced now, 20-odd dates, and I don't think it's going to be those dates and out. I think we're going to be seeing the Eagles playing you know, during 2024, quite possibly into 2025, you know, Elton John and Kiss have certainly set, set a, a new mark 
for farewell tours. Now, of course, their tours were interrupted <laughs> by the pandemic as well, but they still spent, take the pandemic away, and they still spent three years on the road uh, saying farewell. And I think, I think we could say much the same for the Eagles. Um, do we believe this is the final final? It's a little more believable than their last final final or the final final before that. Uh, they're older. And I think they are, they're at a point where they don't want touring to necessarily be the same part. It's already not the same part of their lives as it was during the 70s and 80s, even the 90s when they came back. But I think they no longer want it to be that same part of their lives. And, you know, we might see them just like we might see Elton John do the odd one-off or something. But I think this, I think this genuinely will be the last of the, full-scale concert tours. When you look at the Eagles, that, I mean, really, it is one of the more intact bands um, these days. I mean, you've got a lot of the original members. Obviously, um, you know, Glenn Fry is not going to be there. He passed away, and that's sad for us here in Detroit. But, you know, but you've got, you got Joe Walsh, you got Don Henley, you got Timothy B. Schmidt, you got, what, you got Glenn Fry's son, right, performing in there. Um, you know, that is, that, that's a pretty intact collection of artists um, well, as me, you look let, back and some of what, the way these bands are performing. Yeah, let me counter you on that. Uh, the only original member left in the Eagles now is Don Henley. Uh, Joe Walsh, of course, joined for Hotel California. Timothy Schmidt, B. Schmidt came on uh, during the long run. Uh, Deke, I don't know if Deacon Fry, you know, who did, did a great job filling in for his father for a while, is back with them. He left uh, at one point. Uh, he did not do the Hotel California tour with them, which was their last tour. So, you know, you're really only talking about one original member, two relatively longtime members. Um, so, you know, I, I think you are you are dealing with a credible version of the Eagles. And one thing people should know is adding Vince Gill when they came back after Glenn Fry's uh, death, right. was a master was a master stroke. A tremendous singer, just as good of a guitar player, and really on the Hotel California tour, they they cut him loose and let him start playing some guitar leads, and uh, you know that was just that he's a guy who completely fits in with that band. All right. Well, I left him out and a uh, big mistake because you're right. I and mean, he, I think a lot of people, you know, like a lot of people go see the Eagles. They like the Eagles, but they may really like Joe Walsh. They may, may really like Vince Gill. And I know uh, I didn't see the tour with Vince Gill in it last time, but I, I definitely saw the uh, Joe Walsh contributions. And, you know, he's breaking off and they're doing, you know, some Rocky Mountain Way and some of his classics. Are they yeah. do, do you expect they'll do the same thing with Vince Gill? Uh, they they haven't done one of Vince's songs yet, and I, I actually I've spoken with him a couple times since he's been playing with the Eagles, and he really has no desire to do that. Uh, you know, he he feels like the Eagles, the, an Eagles concert is Eagles songs. Now you're right. You know, Joe Walsh plays some James James Gang stuff. He plays Rocky Mountain Way and Life's Been Good, but because Joe has been in the band since the mid '70s, he's had the ability to make those songs part of the Eagles repertoire. So, you know, they, the Eagles Gary, have been playing. No, no, go ahead and continue. We got a little oh, delay here. I, Sorry I, about that. Right. Go ahead and uh, finish so the, sentence. Sure. So the Eagles have been playing Rocky Mountain Way since the mid 70s. So that, that fits now as a quote unquote Eagles sure. song. So whereas I think to that put in Vince, Right, and to put in Vince Gill songs, you know, most of which are very unfamiliar to the audience, I think would be a little bit of a stretch. All right, well, we won't keep you much longer. Final question for you today. You have interviewed so many of the iconic artists in music when they're on the road. Does traveling for them beat them up? Is it, is it really hard, or in this modern era, when these guys are making so much money and they're so pampered and I'm sure they're jumping on and off the road. Uh, are they loving it or is it really, really tough for them? 
the old the older the artists get the harder the travel is even if you're traveling like the eagles or the rolling stones or paul mccartney you know in the lap of luxury with days days off between concerts it still seems it seems to beat them up even more you know the the young 20 something 30 even 30 somethings are happy to hop in the van or the tour bus and just do the road warrior thing but it's still it's it's a grind you know there's no there's no two ways about that and if you talk to any touring musician or a crew member you know who work work even harder than the, than the musicians do they will talk to you about the constant state of exhaustion that they're in over the course of a tour and i, I think that's true even if even if you are you are traveling in luxury you know, like a band like the eagles all right, Gary, well, thanks for your time today. Listen, if I don't get my Eagles tickets, I'll be calling you. Maybe you need to do uh, some video reporting backstage and need a photog to follow you around. I do occasionally employ bodyguards, so I'll let you know. <laughs> there you go. I think I, I think I can handle that one, too. Gary, before we go, tell people what, what you're doing today, uh, where they can find you on the web or your other projects sure. uh, before we say so long. You know, uh, Graph on Music on Twitter, uh, Gary Graph on Music on Facebook, Real Graph on Music on Instagram. Uh, today there will be reviews from Brett Michaels, uh, Party Gras tour opener last night at Pine Knob. Uh, this weekend it's all about Ed Sheeran. Friday night at the Royal Oak Music Theater, Saturday night at Ford Field, uh, part of a huge, huge concert weekend. I mean, we've got the Faster Horses Festival happening. Uh, we've got Kid Rock doing right. two, show, two, two shows at Joe Wills Arena, a ton of other shows around the area. This is, this is when I'm, I'm getting impatient uh, for cloning technology. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for the update. We'll, we'll keep an eye on your stuff and uh, look forward to seeing you in person and thanks for your time this morning. Gary Always Graff a pleasure, joining Dave. us this morning right here. Good to have you with us. Gary Graff joining us this morning here on the Splash Live. We're going to take a break and we will be right back.